Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Strength for Today, uh, where we are just going verse by verse through the Word of God. Uh, Every month, we're trying to do a a different book of the month. Um, So far, we've covered a number of books this year. Uh, This month, we are in the book of Ephesians. And if you've been with us in our study, then you know that uh, Paul is really encouraging and challenging these believers in the grace of God and an understanding understanding how God's grace and our new life in Christ will impact our relationships. Um, In our most recent episode, we talked about how uh, Paul wrote that a Christian, a follower of Jesus, is going to respond differently to the trials of life and to the um, situations and heartaches caused by other people in our life. And so today we come to Ephesians chapter number five, Ephesians chapter five. We've got 10 episodes today and nine others left in this book. And so we're going to try to get through these last two chapters, although I don't know for sure how that's going to work. But we're going to jump in. Ephesians chapter 5 today, Paul writes this, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for the saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Now, this passage, if you look at it, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Ephesians 5, 1, be imitators of God or followers of God as a child follows a parent. Um, That's a great verse. And Paul uses that, I believe, to build into the entire uh, context of the next uh, the next number of thoughts that Paul gives. But what I want us to understand and see this morning is kind of um, some uh, cultural context that Paul would give, and then we'll get a challenge from this, okay? The people of Ephesus um, were a very uh, knowledgeable and astute people. They were studying. You can go and you can find out that Paul actually taught in the school of Tyrannus there in Ephesus. Ephesus was known as kind of a scholarly area. As much of the Roman Empire had, many, many people would come into certain towns in the Roman Empire and go to the marketplace, to the town square, and they would begin to teach. And um, you can go even to uh, Acts chapter 17. Let me turn there real quick. Pages are sticking together. Acts chapter 17, um, as Paul is preaching in uh, in Athens, and he's talking about the philosophy of Athens. And if you go there, you can find that there he stands there and he says, listen, I know that you people love good teaching and you love when someone comes up and uh, gives a, a challenging thought. So here's what we need to realize. The culture at the time, especially in places like Athens and Ephesus, whenever a teacher would come in, uh, if a teacher could come in and get you or convince you of something that you almost knew wasn't true, but they could just use their words to speak something to cause you to believe something you know wasn't true, then that was a good speaker. Okay, here's why we need to know that. 
As Paul writes here, he says, I want to encourage you to be a imitator of God, like a child following the Lord, and walk in love. And then he says, and don't let fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, don't let any of this be named among you, nor filthiness, foolish talking, coarse jesting. Uh, don't let it, it's not fitting for you, but instead give thanks. And then verse number five, he says this. For this you know, no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man or idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. Let no one deceive you, listen, with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Do not, therefore, do not be partakers with them. Don't let anyone come and convince you of something that is not his word. Be a follower of God walk in love, resist temptation, and don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Okay. How does that help us? How can we translate that into our day? Uh, why is it important to know that people were coming in to try to speak deceptive words? Well, let me just give, uh, I'll just kind of give a couple of challenges and then we'll close with uh, the, the cultural context application. So here's what we need to know. Um, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, your role model in life is always going to be the Lord. It's always going to be Jesus Christ. It's always going to be God through His Word. And as a child follows a parent, that's the way that a Christian should follow the Lord. You think as a child follows a parent, a child is completely trusting. A child is always open. A child is asking questions and learning from mom or dad. A child is always imitating mom and dad. A child is always desiring to be close to mom and dad. A child is running to mom and dad when they're scared. A child is always in constant communication with mom and dad. You think about a child and a parent, man, there is great challenge to us to bring all of those aspects of a parent-child relationship into our relationship with the Lord. Am I following God as a child? trusting, communicating, relying on, running to, all of those thoughts. The second thing Paul says, not only do we follow him as dear children, but we walk in love. Man, we are to love like the Lord, loving people the way God loves people, loving um, our opportunities the way God loves opportunities. God lo looked at uh, the opportunity of dying on a cross for us, and he looked at that with joy and with love. And so we are to walk in love, it says there, as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us. But then the third thought, I resist, I resist sinful temptation and I resist sinful information that would cause me to, um, to question God, to doubt God. Now, <clears throat> there is something about questioning God that is good. All right. We, sh we should know what we believe and why we believe it. We should ask questions. We should dive into Scripture. This, the part of questioning God that is not healthy is when we question God's existence or uh, in the sense of like, well, I just, you know, God, I don't know, you didn't do this for me. And so I question even if you like me, even if you love me. And we have we have that type of stuff. Now, all of us go through some of those thoughts. But what we need to realize is that the question of God that leads us to trust him more is healthy. The questioning of God that leads us to doubt him, uh, man, that's that's unhealthy. So as a child of God, what should we do? Well, I want to allow the voices that speak into me to be the voices that are going to draw me closer to the Lord. So here is, of course, uh, Paul writing this. And the thought there, let no one deceive you, verse 6, with empty words. Listen, people are going to come, people at Ephesus, church at Ephesus, individuals are going to come and they're going to speak great words, but those words are empty. They don't have a life that backs it up. They don't have a, a fellowship of God. No, here's what I'm encouraging you to do. Don't let any of these words deceive you because of these, the things, because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Hey, here's who you should accompany yourself and partner yourself with. Partner yourself with God. Don't partner yourself with these teachers that are giving false truths. 
partner yourself with a loving God who died for your sin. So let's take that. Let's connect it to us for an application. Number one, every day I should ask the Lord, am I following you as a child? Am I trusting you? Am I communicating with you? Am I desiring to be like you? Lord, today, help me to imitate you as a child would follow you. Number two, God, am I walking in love, representing your love today? God, am I allowing my life to love like you love? And then number three, God, are my associations, am I associating with people that are drawing me away from you? Or am I associating with people that are encouraging me toward you? God, help me not to listen to the empty words of this culture that would cause me to doubt you and to get frustrated at you and to question your existence and then allow these sinful things into my life. God, help me today to accompany myself, to partner myself with people that are following you as dear children and loving like you. A couple challenges that I hope will be a help to us. We'll pick up tomorrow in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 8. We will see you in the next episode.